Hey there, welcome back to Farmcraft. I've got a job that I need to do with my excavator. It's some field work and actually it needs to be done sooner rather than later. We'll look at that in a minute. But first, I never addressed the, uh, the tracking on this thing. Uh, the last video I did on this, it still wasn't tracking straight even after doing the track adjusters. I wanna take a look at that, see if it's something simple, like maybe just one of the controls uh, needs a little bit more travel and its range or something, and see if I can do a quick fix before we get out there. But I don't have time to do a, a full tear in right now. I gotta get this field done. So let's see what we can do. Oh, and this video is sponsored by, who's it sponsored by? Manscaped. <laughs> hmm. Apparently we're gonna be doing some manscaping in this video. <laughs> Well, it didn't magically fix itself while I was sitting there. Darn it. All right, so here's the deal. It seems like the left one won't go enough, but the controls go the exact same amount. In fact, if anything, the left one goes a little bit more forward. Um, it's also slow in reverse. So I don't think it's the adjustment of the control that's the problem. Looking down here, I'm moving the left one now. I mean, that spool looks like it has full travel, but it is hitting the stop right there. But like I said, it hits it at the same place that the other one does. And the other ones travel a little harder for me to show you, but it looks about the same. You know, I was hoping I could come over here and do a quick adjustment of that. What I will do is I'll back that stop out or I'll screw it in just a little bit to give me a little bit more travel on that side and see if that makes any difference. So it's tough for me to see. I'm just using a feeler gauge to make sure that the stop isn't like really limiting it. So if I push it with light pressure, I can still get 10 thousandths behind it. But if I push any harder, it's on the stop. So I think that's what I want. Good, I've definitely got full travel. I'll see if that made any difference. I doubt it will. So you're looking at two big dead trees here. They got struck by lightning. I really liked these trees, but unfortunately they're both dead and they have to be removed. You can see how many limbs they've been dropping and that's a hazard to my cattle who like to get under the trees for shade. These two are some pretty good sized trees, but downhill is that way. Uh, I think I can just dig the roots out on the top side and then push them over with the excavator. Um, I've never done that on a tree this big, but uh, we'll see how it goes.
Since I'm removing these trees, I'm going to go ahead and clear this whole area to make it easier to mow. So I'm starting on this tree on the right, which is a big old poplar. And that's a two foot bucket on the excavator. I think the, the tree is probably three feet across at the base. That's a big tree. And the roots are rather large. It's pretty slow going. I'm really kind of fighting to get through these roots uh, for quite a while here. What do you think? Is trying to dig a tree like this with a small excavator like this a good idea? Or should I just cut it down and leave the stump? So after about 40 minutes of digging, I had cut all the roots on both sides in the back and I had a pretty good trench going around it. I decided to give it a push. Yeah, pretty much it just laughed at me. Well, in my typical fashion, I think I uh, might have bit off a little more than I can chew. I need a bigger machine for a tree this big, I really think. I mean, I can do it. I can keep digging. But I've got quite a hole there, and I still can't even move it. And the machine's just not strong enough to get through those roots and get... You know, if I could get all that dirt out from underneath this end, I could push it off. Push it over. Anyway, I'll quit complaining. I just lost a tooth off of the bucket. I did not see where it went. And uh, I don't have another. 
So, I am going to go get my metal detector and try to find that thing. Now, from what I know of pine trees, I don't think the root structure on that is going to be nearly as bad. <laughs> Probably jinxing myself as we speak, but hopefully I can do that one. But, you know, this is how you learn. Uh, I'll, I'll now know to tackle a tree like this is probably not the best idea, um, but I'm this far, so I'm going to keep going. So obviously I found the tooth very quickly, but finding the smaller pin that holds it in place was a little more difficult and took a little time. And there it is. How about that? You gotta love it when a plan works. In business. So like I said, this video is sponsored by Manscaped. No, we're not going there. This is a beard trimmer. And it's a pretty nice one. I mean, yes, it's a beard trimmer. There are plenty of those out there. But lithium ion, and it has multiple adjustments of depth. This spacer gets adjusted up and down. If you want to cut as close as possible, you just pop this off. And you don't need a bunch of different attachments for different settings. You just move the depth adjustment, and uh, it, it actually works pretty well. It's lithium ion, lasts a long time, and it's even waterproof, so you can use it in the shower. Let's see how this thing works. Wow, this thing's fast. Go to manscaped.com to get 20% off and free shipping right now if you use the code FARMCRAFT at checkout. And just between you and me, I've heard you can actually use these on your Johnson. So you can actually see the path that the lightning took right down that tree, right down the trunk, split it, and into the ground right there. Now, last time I was fighting with a stump, it was much bigger than this, but uh, several people suggested that I turn the bucket around backwards, and uh, then I can, I can dig out and up underneath. So I'll give that a try. This did allow me to undermine the stump a little bit, not a whole lot, and it was kind of hard to dig in this position. The cylinders are all set up to be at their strongest in the other direction, so the machine feels pretty weak trying to dig like this.
quick change bucket feature is pretty nice though. I tried to push on it some more and proceeded to get laughed at some more. I had dug so much out that I couldn't get that close to the tree, so I decided to put some dirt back in the ditch that I had dug so that I could get closer and try to push a little higher. There's a little movement, but really not much. And yes, I was conscious all throughout this job that a limb could fall. The excavator had a good solid metal roof above me. I tried working it back and forth to see if I could loosen it up, but I wasn't making any headway. So I decided to come around the front uh, in the fall direction and take a little bit off there. Obviously you have to be careful because that's what's preventing it from falling back in the direction that I'm trying to push it. So you don't want to take out too many roots and go too deep, but I don't know, this tree is pretty well planted. I don't think it's going to fall over easy in any direction. Well, that thing couldn't be much closer. You know, this took an awful long time and I didn't get much done, but I learned something, so it's okay. The sun's setting now, so I'm gonna come back tomorrow. I'm gonna rope it and I'm gonna pull it in that direction and then also push it, and that should do it. I can push and then pull a little more and we'll, we'll get it down. Now I'm tying the pull rope to the throw line so that I can get the rope up there. I showed this in my guide to tree felling video and we'll also see more of it in this video. Now I'm pulling the rope through so now that little thin throw line is being replaced with a heavy duty rope that I can pull on. Then I tie a slip knot, pull in the slack and I've got the tree roped. So the first thing I need to do is get this come along in place. All right, so that is now set up to be able to pull on that rope. Now I just need something to hook it to and I'm gonna use the tail end and put it around this tree. And that's a bowling on a bite. There. This thing can't push as hard as the excavator, or pull as hard as the excavator can push, but I'm like, three times as high in the tree, so I've got a lot more leverage.
Good grief, this is a lot of work. Well, that was a learning experience. But we are down, and I will never take a tree that big down that way again with this excavator. That probably took me, what, three, four hours? Too long, not worth it.
So I was thinking this was going to be firewood. I wasn't expecting to find such a nice log. I think that's got to go to the sawmill. I don't know. We'll see once I cut this side. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's a lot of poplar there. <laughs> Yeah, I was actually glad to be cutting a little bit away from the, the stump because I knew this would hit the ground and that's not going to flip towards me too much. If you're right there, I don't know, that thing could, could shift and something like that could get close to me. I don't really want to get hit by that. Man, this tree's big. I think it's, uh, it's turning out to be bigger than I even realized. It was surrounded by brush when I started and I never really walked up to it and hugged it. That's a big log. See if the tractor can get that out of there. Well, I look a little closer at it. Yeah, I don't know. That wood's not ideal. You can see it's already cracking there. I could definitely get some heartwood out of it. It's 25 inches on the small end. Let's see how the other end looks. Yeah, you can see it's bolting there. I don't know. I think this might be firewood, I hate to say. 29 inches. In my experience, you know, you get a log like this. It's going to have bugs in it. There's an ant right there. Like if I were to build a piece of furniture out of this and bring it into the house, I might bring bugs into the house with it. Nice log, but I think that's going to be burnt. That's a bummer, man. Two years ago, that tree was alive and healthy. Had I known it was going to get struck by lightning and I had cut it down then, I'd have lumber.
So now the question is, am I stupid and stubborn enough to try to dig that one? That's a big one, but it's not as big. At least it's not as big around and it's a pine. And I tend to think it's gonna be easier. <laughs> Famous last words. Um, but I'm not gonna do it right now. It's really windy right now. I don't wanna be messing around with it in the wind and have it trying to go the wrong way on me. All right, I am just stupid enough that I'm gonna try it again. I just wanna see if this will go a little easier and I suspect it won't be that much easier and I will learn that any big tree uh, I probably should just cut down rather than dig. Don't be so pessimistic. Let's give it a try. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and rope this thing and attach it to my tractor down there. Get that out of the way first and it'll also make it safer while I'm sitting here working on it. The wind's still blowing a little bit and it's blowing the wrong direction but it's not blowing as hard. So. So the rope, here's the line coming down from the branch. So the first thing I do is a double girth hitch. So make a loop, put your first finger and your thumb through it, and then cross over those lines and pull that through. See how that kind of makes a hitch? Then you put the rope through that and I get about a foot down and tighten that up. So loop thumb and finger up through and then over those lines and pull them through and that's where you want the rope to go is through those two loops that you just made then you tighten that up and that alone will hold the rope fairly well but not not by itself so then you do the same thing but it's half it's it's half hitches so I just do one loop like that and really the number of these varies. Uh, sometimes I'll just do two or three if I know it's gonna be a real easy pull. If it's gonna be going through a crotch, I'm worried about it getting stuck, I'll do more. And you can see that the weight of the rope is going to keep that hooked. And so, you know, this one will come off, maybe that one will come off, but it doesn't matter, you've got more. And that generally will, will work just fine, pulling through crotches and everything. There's no knot there, there's no big thing to get hooked, so. That's what you want. So now you can see I'm just over a limb, but if I bring both tails of the rope around the trunk, now I've got the trunk encircled. So I just need to tie a slip knot and send the knot up the tree. And I use a bowline for this. A bowline itself is not a slip knot, but if you tie it around the other rope, then it will slip. And I also show this in detail in that video, The Biggest Tree I've Ever Felled, uh, link in the description. Let the digging commence. Well, so far that wasn't too bad. The digging went better. The root ball is much smaller. So hopefully I'm going to be able to push this thing over. I pushed as high and as hard as it could. I tightened the rope several times as I was doing this. I dug some more. I pushed some more. I just needed to dig deeper, I think. So that's gonna have to wait till tomorrow. All right, it's the next day. And what I've discovered is the roots go deeper on this tree. So I'm gonna dig deeper in the back. I'm also gonna dig a little bit in the front just to try to take some more of the strength out of it. See if we can knock this thing over. Of course, it's windy again. Don't like that. Tracks have gotten loose. You know, when I did a, the track adjuster rebuild, I realized after the fact, thanks to comments, that um, 
I put the backup ring and the O-ring backwards. I'm pretty sure I put them on the way that they were when I found it, but they were wrong. And I can't really tell looking at it if it's leaking or not. So I'm just gonna pump it up again and we'll see what happens. Next time I'm in there, I'm definitely gonna reverse those. The backup ring, it needs to go pressure, O-ring, backup ring. And mine are the opposite direction. So it's hard to see without taking it all apart, but I don't see any evidence that it's leaking. And this is the first time I've tensioned them since doing the track adjusters. And I can tell you this tension is holding so far. I think we're good. I mean, you can see those roots. That's the problem is I'm trying to break a tree in half. I mean, look at how big those tap roots are. This is way worse than the poplar. Here's my options. I could fill that hole up with water, but I don't have any reasonable way to do that. Um, and that would probably loosen that all up. I could get down in there with a chainsaw. That would be really dumb. I am gonna get a pole saw and I'm gonna reach down in there and I am going to nick all of those roots to loosen them to weaken them and hopefully that'll do it well wouldn't you know it i have never needed my pole saw more and it won't start for the first time so i've got a digging bar here <clears throat> oh that's a long ways off it's windy again and getting windier by the hour i'd really like to get this tree down not safe all right I'm gonna take some of the tension off of it and let it sit here and go fix my pole saw all right well here's a carburetor on this thing and I've not found anything wrong yet I've checked it for spark it just won't uh, won't run it's kind of strange actually it has good spark but it won't fire even with starting fluid let's just say this thing picked a doozy of a day to not start There's the thin kind of membrane on top that I'm going to be able to get off. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, under it's just a gasket. And this looks fine. Hmm. Still pliable, but look at this. This is like some RTV. That's no good.
If you're wondering, I have never been in this car before, and I bought this new. So the RTV that was in there was put in by steel. Click. Okay, we'll put some fresh gas in it and see if it runs. Man, the wind is blowing out there. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Yeah, I think the primer just worked. See all the stuff blowing out of there? I think uh, me trying to start it must have put a bunch of stuff in the cylinder. I don't know, it's like, I guess that uh, RTV in there was making it flood out. Let me open up the exhaust and just make sure that the muffler isn't plugged and that the uh, spark arrestor's clear. Whoa, there's actually uh, yeah, that's gasoline from when I was trying to crank it. It was that flooded that it was just dumping it through. That's crazy. So I've got it on stop so it won't run, but Yeah, no, no more coming out. So that's good. I think that'll do it. Let's go get this tree down. a really awkward position to cut in and I think my chain got dull very quickly hopefully that's gonna be enough I mean, look at this tree. There is like nothing holding it on this side of the tree. It's all gone. So I tightened the rope as tight as it would go, worried about breaking the come along at this point. I pushed some more, I tightened it again, pushed again, I dug some more, I cut some more, and pushed some more even more than I'm showing here. All right, this is it. If it doesn't go, I'm changing plans. Yep, I'm done screwing with that tree. I filled that in so that I can have, uh, <laughs> you hear the wind? <laughs> Couldn't be a better day to do this. Uh, so that I can have a place to stand and I'm just gonna cut that tree down. And then I'm gonna dig that stump out of there.
Should have done that from the start. Hard to count precisely, but it's around 90 years old. Now, again, this wood actually, yeah, see there's some bug damage right there and it's spalted a little bit there. I can see it's discolored and I can see all up and down the bark, there's woodpecker holes. So I know this thing is bug infested. So more firewood. All right, I am gonna get this tree cleaned up and then I'm gonna dig that stump out of there, damn it. <laughs> this might seem silly at this point, but it'll be really nice to not have a stump here to hit when I'm mowing. And I also really wanted to see what was holding this tree up. I bet you'll be surprised, I certainly was. See that thing moving? Looks like I'm getting close, doesn't it? Suddenly my blade down pressure and the swing both just got really weak. And I'm pretty sure they both run off. There's actually three hydraulic pumps on this thing. I'm betting you it's the pump. Not sure what else would fail that would make both functions, you know, both ways swing and uh, the blade down is just abysmally weak. <clears throat> but I'm still going to get this stump out of here. This might give you a little perspective on just how big the roots and that stump are. And I was using the axe because I knew if I hit the dirt with my chainsaw chain, it would get dull really quickly. Heck with the chain, I can sharpen it. There's also a central route and I cut what I could, but it's kind of harder to get to because there's so much dirt around it. All right, let's pull this darn thing out of here. No, my excavator's not weak, and that's about an 8 inch root that I just cut that you can see moving, and it still will not come out. I held it back with the excavator so that I could clear some of the dirt around that other root. Good grief! The tap root's as big as the tree! So I don't know if the camera really shows it. I mean, that's four feet underground and it's still a full-size tree. That's insane. Okay, <laughs> don't try to dig pines. It's crazy though, because I've seen pines uproot. I thought a lot of times, not I guess not huge ones, but anyway. Yeah, I'm learning today. There we are. 
you know, there's my hand. Fingertip to here is probably eight inches. That's 24 inches across. That's a tap root. <laughs> That's the underground part. This is the tree. Yeah, obviously I've never seen anything like that before. I imagine some of you experienced excavator operators are laughing at me. That's okay. I'm all right with that. I learned a lesson that I will never forget. <laughs> Don't try to dig big trees with a mini excavator. Even if it's a big mini excavator. It's a 14,000 pound machine, but <laughs> nope. I actually think a big excavator would have had trouble with this. That's absurd. The other thing is, I think my excavator's broken again. I'm fairly disappointed about that, but I guess that's more content for you guys. Yay. <laughs> Can I just have something that just works? <laughs> that's why I bought Yanmar is because actually Andrew Camerata said, you know, that his never breaks. And man, I am gonna end up fixing everything on this machine. But, you know, oh well. I would like to buy a bigger old excavator, you know, one that doesn't cost an arm and a leg, that with a little bit of work, I could make into a functional machine for doing stuff like this. I've been looking, but man, they are hard to come by and everything's expensive. Even the ones that aren't functional are selling for $8,000. Anyway, uh, if anyone's in the Virginia area and they have a machine like that that you wanna see put back in action and you're willing to sell it for a reasonable price, let me know. I'm gonna get this hole filled in and that'll be the outro of the video. Thanks for watching, we'll see you on the next one. Look at the size of that thing. Just me or does that thing look bigger? <laughs>